I am now. Well, okay. Thank you for reminding so gonna, me of the best. Yeah, not a problem. So I'm just going to quick statement on the uh, governor's state of emergency gives us the right to have meetings, but not in person. There is no physical presence for this meeting. Minutes are taken and this video is being uploaded um, for our community and we are allowing public comment and people can dial in and if there's any issues, we will be notified. Is that good enough, Mr. Chamberlain? That is great. Perfect. Um, well, thank you everyone for a happy last day of school. Is today, correct? Or is it? What was today? Uh, no? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, okay. Second feels year, like today. it. Yeah, it feels like it. But we're getting closer. So I'm just going to do a quick roll call of who's here. Just say you're here, and that'd be great, just so everyone knows. Um, Jay Burgers. Here. Um, Rob Nato. Present. Steve Chamberlain. Here. Michelle Clark. Here. Bill Carrozza. Here. Amy Doyle. Here. And then Chris or Rebecca Gagnon. Here. Perfect. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for coming. So we've got quite a bit to go over today, um, but let's get through this. The first thing we are going to do is, do I have a motion to approve our minutes from May 5th, please? I'll make the motion, Michelle. Do we have second. a second? I'll second. Perfect. All right. Uh, I'm going to do a quick roll call. Jay Burgess. Okay. Uh, Rob Nato. Yes. Perfect. Um, Steve. Yes. Michelle Clark. Yes. Bill Carrozza. Yes. Amy Doyle. Yes. And Chris Kelly. Yes. And Norm Kupel. Yes. Perfect. Thank you very much. Motion carries. Um, great. Next thing to discuss is review bid results, calendar, costing, and other documentations from HL Turner and BPS since our last meeting. Who would like to go first? What do you think, Gordon? You want to do drawings first? I don't I can, see I can, sh I can show the Harold Martin drawings real quick. Yeah, let's do the drawings then. Then we'll go over the budget. Yep. Okay. Sharing screen. Initiate. I made it so anybody on the panelists could share, so hopefully you're okay, Doug. Uh, yeah, I, I just keep forgetting to hit the button. <laughs> Seeing that? Mm, yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, hold on a second. I got to adjust something. There we go. So, uh, these drawings were released on the 26th, or I'm sorry, the morning of the 27th. We did have a little hiccup with the cover sheet that we had to fix. So um, basically, got the cover sheet, civil drawings, existing site, and we get into. Um, so we have the parking alternate over here, which you can kind of see additional 17 spaces going in there. And then we have the footprint of the new building added on to the front of the existing. Um, and then we have a bunch of other miscellaneous stuff going on with the uh, water tank and some other things. So we do ha have the proposed um, cistern going in the back of the building here with a water connection to it. Um, it's not exactly depicted correctly here. It needs to move up into here out of the way of the roadway, but that was the idea. I do not have the actual um, fire protection drawings yet from uh, SFC, they're gonna send me a package to review in the morning. Since that kind of got started late, we, uh, we're gonna issue that as, as an addendum to the, to the full um, contract of the HMS. Uh, some detailed drawings for bollards and paving and manholes. Then we have structural drawings so this, this is the foundation plan of the addition. 
going on. Then we had the framing plan. So this covers um, second floor roof framing, and second floor framing and roof framing, and then second floor alternate roof framing. And, I'm sorry, and uh, alternate roof framing. So the alternate is the multi-purpose room going in, to, uh, being attached to the front of the building. That's alternate number four. Um, details, just some more details. Um, and then we get into the architectural drawings. And when you're going through the drawings, you can always tell where you are by the, the lead letter of the sheet. A is architectural, S is structural, C is civil, and whatnot. Um, the uh, code review for the for the addition and the rest of the building. I, we do have preliminary submissions into the state fire marshal for all three school projects. They have sent back comments and um, I'll be uh, sending back my response to the comments. And they only had a preliminary set of Harold Martin. They never saw the finished set. So a lot of the uh, items that they commented are, are taken care of in the finished set. Um, our lower level plan. So we have the stair coming down. We have a corridor. We have a breakthrough to come out of the multi-purpose room into this corridor and get up the stair. And we have a storage room with a mechanical room behind it. So you'll be able to use this for this front section here for storage and then also access the mechanical room. We didn't need this full space for mechanical. Oops, sorry, I keep messing up. Uh, this is the, the uh, first floor. So we have the main secure vestibule coming in, the office manager and the main office entrance, conference room, principal's office, guidance office, and a storage room that is also large enough to become an um, office in the future. And that's the way we set it up mechanically. If you want to use this as an office, it, it, it'll be fine for that. Um, and the guidance, we also created this rear corridor through the existing principal's office so that she can have so students can access her office from this way but she all but she also has access to the principals and the main office to receive visitors or or be included in meetings or or whatever and then another alternate we've included is the nurse's office so um we have the nurse's office the waiting restroom shower room uh secure storage and then a three cot area and then we've also included the um, main office restroom, a staff restroom up in this corner, which is also accessed off of that rear corridor there. The alternate is base bid, the office stays as it is, and we work with the partitions in there to convert it into a nurse's office. And if we can afford it, we'll go ahead and do the alternate to, to revamp it. Um, we have the two classrooms here with a uh, shared restroom between them, corridor going down to the stair stairwell on this side. And I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit because these are really code review plans. I'm gonna go into the regular floor plans for you. So these are a little more confusing because they got all the the information, the uh, reference information on them. But this is the second floor plan. So um, we have a new fire separation here. This is all a firewall, if you recall, separating the two buildings. Because right now we're not sprinkled. If we become sprinkled through alternate, um, then we don't need to build this wall. It, all it does is take care of the the protection material in the wall, it really doesn't change the construction of the wall or how we're building the addition. Um, so basically you can't break through here and then there's a window looking out over the roof and then you have your second floor corridor to the two classrooms and the stair tower again. And then the, then we have the roof plan. So on the roof plan, we're, we're redoing this roof and the preschool roof, which were recommended in the report, we have another alternate to redo the roof of the old, of the original 50s section, and then we have the new roof area. And then we have a new mechanical unit that serves this whole addition 
going on up here. Um, so this is the alternate plan for the multi-purpose room. So instead of just doing the corridor that comes around and leads, leads down to the classrooms, we have this multi-purpose room space, two staff restrooms and a custodial closet up here. And then these are the associated ceiling plans with that, the associated roof plan, and then just enlargements of the toilet rooms. Uh, more ceiling plans for the lower floors, base, base bed ceiling plan on the second floor, and large plans of restrooms and um, nurse's office. I went ahead, um, so I took the liberty, let me go back a second, uh, sorry, I know I'm jumping around here. I took the liberty of these two restroom, of the three restroom sets, the, the one down on the lower level adjacent to the gym, and these two, they weren't really referenced as, they, so the, the, the Harold Martin restrooms were res, referenced on there as ADA corrections. These bathrooms are fine ADA wise, but we went ahead and um, did renovated the bathrooms and updated them a little bit, but we've, in, we've incorporated all that as, a, as an alternate so that they're fine the way they are. Yes, the materials in them are a little dated, but op, they operate, operationally they're okay. So we incorporated an alternate for those to um, just remain as is, just in case you need to use that, those funds somewhere else. It gives you that option also identifies the costs associated with that. So these are the restrooms that we're revamping on the two floors to make them ADA accessible. And here's, here's the upper set. This one's a little more difficult to make ADA accessible. So we'll have to get, when we get into construction, we'll see how we deal with this. There's a chimney right here that we might have to, that's not used anymore that we might have to cut into. But uh, I didn't want to get into that without knowing what's going on there. So roof plans, alternate plans we went over. These are just finished schedules, door schedules. These identify, you know, what all the doors that are on the plan, what hardware they get, what the doors made out of, what the door frames made out of, and the finishes that it gets, and the room signage it gets. Um, these are the window types that are in the exterior elevations. Here come the exterior elevations. So this is the base bid front elevation. This is the alternate elevation with the incorporation of the multi-purpose room. And then we have these smaller partial elevations that go around the building. And then this is the end elevation that you'd see facing the uh, the, the playground. And then these are just little small partial elevations as they go around the, the building. These are building sections. So th these are cuts that we do through the building just to show you the, how the spaces work. So we have the lobby, the multi-purpose room above, secure vestibule. You'll say you're seeing ceilings and lights and tile work and this is where we go outside so this is an exterior wall so that's the way you read these so this is these are the corridors with their tile work indicated so we don't have block walls in this building but what we've done is um incorporated um abuse resistant drywall and then layered um porcelain tile over those as protection so you get the flexibility to be, being able to alter the building in the future by moving walls, but um, you also get the protection of the walls from the tile. These are just, these are wall sections through the exterior walls. They show, here's a typical one here, shows two and a half inches of spray foam on the outside with, with uh, fiberglass insulation on the inside, which gets you a pretty, pretty efficient um, thermal envelope pretty tight thermal envelope as well.
probably an R23 in the end. Um, these are just details of the wall sections, roof details, more roof details, plan details. So, so the way that you read these is when you go through the floor plans or elevations, you'll see an indicator that looks like this on those floor plans. And if you're curious to see what that detail looks like, it tells you the bottom number tells you what sheet to go to, which is A53, and then it gives you the number detail. And that's the enlargement of what's happening on the floor plan in that location. And all these drawings have been put on Procore for everybody that has access to it. Um, more details, more, these are um, window details and door details, more window details. And these are all restroom elevations with tile. And uh, so I can zoom in here, you can see the boys room with partitions and um, urinals and a door. and quarter elevations again. And then these are just casework details. So we have ADA accessible sinks. We have uh, storage cubbies with shelving above. We have storage cabinets, teacher's cabinet with a coat rod, tile detail, um, the reception desk detail. And then this is the detail at the exterior wall for that reception desk. Oops, what's that? Uh, then we get into plumbing drawings, plumbing de demolition. These these plumbing drawings show piping and connections to sinks and stuff like that. So you'll, these are vertical risers and horizontal risers. And riser diagrams. And then we get into HVAC, which is ductwork and heating piping. So you'll see we're working on the two, replacing the two mechanical units here in the mezzanine. Sorry, this is, a, this is actually a demo drawing. Sorry, let me go further on. All right, so here, here are the new units shown in those locations. We had to add another louver in the back of the building and uh, some new louvers out front. Uh, then you're seeing the fusers in the walls for um, the air system coming into the building. And you know we see, see ductwork in the hallways and everything. A lot of the ductwork happens up on the second floor and then we run it vertically down to the rooms. And what that does is it saves um, ceiling space on the first floor because these older buildings, the ceilings are kind of tight. So we, we, we bump up our ceilings, we bump up our, build, our addition height roof and then we're able to fit all the ductwork in on the second floor. Uh, mechanical roof plan, here's the new mechanical unit. And these are piping drawings showing your fin tube radiation going around the building and, and different valves and, and things. And more piping details. These are schedules and they indicate the um, different mechanical units and the performance that we're looking out of them, which the contractor uses to, to um, one, purchase the unit and then two, to set the unit up and, uh, and design the ductwork. Some of these schedules take a little while to load. There are more schedules. Then we get into electrical <laughs> drawings. Um, and then on this electrical drawing, you'll see that we have added um, the generator and the equipment necessary for alternate number five, which is the um, sprinkler um, fire pump. So he, he has that all incorporated <coughs> already. And we're just looking for the fire protection drawings. Um, and 
again, these are demo drawings, electrical drum, demo drawings, and then new drawings. So this is lighting. So these are lighting layouts and it has a circuitry indicated on them. And whenever you see the slash through the light like this, that's indicating a um, egress light. So those lights are partially on all the time or they come on as you, as, as you walk through the building for emergency egress. They have emergency ballast in them. If the fire, fire alarm goes on, those lights click on so people can find their way out. Um, just the power for the mechanical room. And then we have um, electrical outlets and data ports and wall phones and other things. And um, we'll have to go through this in a little more detail with the school since we are doing a lot of this after the COVID incident. So we'll have to just verify that we have enough locations there with, um, with IT and the school and the instructors. Um, power for the rooftop mechanical unit. And then these are just um, panel diagrams, how they wire the building. And then um, these are fire alarm drawings. So we have a new fire alarm system going in Harold Martin. So these, these are the new devices that take place throughout the building and get wired into the new panel system. and second floor and and again and again the alternate so everybody has has done double duty um helping me incorporate this uh, multi-purpose room alternate and hopefully we can afford it and that's it that's the last sheet so i don't know if anybody has any questions uh Doug, any way to get a, a copy of these in a, in a PDF at some point? I know it's top secret pretty much. Yeah, I can send out PDFs. They're rather large, so we'll do our best. <laughs> I might sh I might send you a, a sharing link as opposed to a, a direct I, email. Yeah, like a Dropbox link makes more sense. Yeah, thanks. yeah Doug, can we put them on the Google Drive? I guess we could. I don't know who can access it. Everyone on this call, I believe, right? Yep. Yeah. Doug, I have a quick question. Yep. When we look at the at the um, and I I haven't had a chance to look at the the mechanical stuff yet. I'll try to do that. I I've had a little trouble with Procore earlier uh, related to another project. But uh, if we look at the if we look at the filtration, would there be um, is there any option or would, would it require any massive work to look at what it would take to run um, 13 filters in there versus nine? I can ask, um, let me ask Tom about that, MERF 13. Yeah, the, the, I'm looking at some of the ASHRAE stuff and that's kind of what they're trying to lead people towards. Um, this might be our might be our opportunity to do it now if we can. He might have that already. I don't know. Let me see. He could. It could already be integrated in there. I just, it's, that guidance is relatively new. Um, it also references uh, more makeup air, but um, I, I got to apologize in advance. I haven't looked at the, at the mechanical plans yet. Let's see. I thought I saw this before, but it's not popping out at me right now. I can stop, I can stop sharing. Oh, yeah, we're at Merv, Merv 8 for the indoor air handling. Let me see over here. Yeah, he's got Merv 8 filters, you're right. Yeah, if we could take a look at that, I think that th that may be a question that comes up. I know I I've been asking it, so it's it's probably it's probably sure. worth uh, just getting an answer on that. Uh, what it would take um, at this stage to do it, probably it'd probably be worth looking at. 
It, it might require a change in the mechanical units because um, in the spec of the mechanical units, because you have to have a stronger unit to pull the air through the filters. But I can yeah, ask him. That if it's it depends on what they've got spec to, but he'll 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 probably know right away. We're finding that we can do it, uh, but we end up running all of our stuff at you know basically 100% on the BFD. But uh, it, it's worth looking at, I think. Okay, I'll check with him. Looks great, Happy. Doug. Thanks. Does anyone have any questions for Harold Martin? Pretty amazing detail, Doug. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, I mean that as a compliment. <laughs> Doug, when, when's the first start of the project for this immediately for Harold Martin? I know we have a phase on a certain schedule, but just remind me what day. I think that's a BPS question. BPS, okay. Is BPS zooming in? I see a, yeah. I see a sign. I don't see a face. Yeah, we're here. <laughs> <laughs> so since we're on, we're, since we're on Harold Martin right now, when do you guys are initiating um, starting? Um, I I think we're thinking uh, July on that one. He, I mean, they they've just received the drawing, so they have to go through their bidding process. So that's going to take yeah. them take them okay. three to four weeks. Yeah, and then and then you got to get people signed up. You know, it could be five weeks. So the bid we received today was just for Maple Street. Is that correct? No, the bids for Maple Street norm were last Tuesday, and then okay. we had the Middle High School on Thursday. So we've so Perfect. far we've got we've got the numbers squared away on Maple Street, and where we look like we'll have numbers squared away this week on Middle High, and then we'll have bids coming in. I'm gonna say the 18th of June for um, Harold Martin. Okay, awesome. Okay. Uh, so we did square away Maple, and Maple is um, is tracking right where we were in March when we had that our revisions to uh, work through that. And Doug Doug took that information, followed through with his design on Maple. We were looking in March at a number of 936,000, and we are currently at 935.8. So um, that one is tracking well with the scope that we had talked about in March, and I'm hoping that Middle High will go along nicely also. Great. Do you want to talk a little? Now would be a good time maybe for you to talk BPS a little more. Uh, let's, let's have maybe a five-minute lesson on the bid we're looking at. So that's what we sent out to you earlier today. They came in last week. We wanted to go down through, read all the detail of them. BPS did that. And now as of, and we had a meeting on the phone last Thursday, things were looking good. And then today they published what they feel they can do a GMP for Maple Street to be. But do you guys want to go down through and talk for a few minutes about that? Yeah, so we got the bids in, Gordon, on that. And last week we were, we were a little high on that. So, um, and we had not worked through all of the alternates. So we had, we had the six alternates for Maple Street, and we were able to compile that into that document you have there, Gordon. That and that has, that ranges from a a level one report to a level two report to a level two with detail report. And all that is, is is how much detail. So the first page of that is just broad stroke kind of by division. Um, as Doug was working through his drawings and talking about, um, you know, site work to concrete to mechanical, all of that um, is breaking out, broken out by division. That brings you to the 935. And then as you go through the level two, it breaks it out a little, a little more. And then the the detail report in the back there, Gordon, gives you every individual item for those who are uh, really into that kind of detail. Um, so from here, uh, we'll be putting together bid recommendations and coming to you guys with, um, with all the bid results and every individual item. That will probably trickle through, I would think, more on a basis of as 
as needed for Barry to, to coordinate his schedule. For instance, to get started, mostly in the way that we work the project, to get started with, with concrete and demo and, and items like that, and then work through to some of the more important items that aren't necessarily things that'll go right off, but things that are long lead items like mechanical and electrical. So we'll be releasing those or proposing to release those and coming to you with bid recommendations and results, looking to sign those folks up early so that we can we can get them working on submittals and and packages so that we're, we can get our submittals approved from Doug's office, get things ordered and get them in a timely fashion so we can hit our, hit our schedules as Barry's put together. This is great. So one of the things we'll talk about probably at our next meeting is we'll have at that point the uh, prices for Hopkins Jr. and Senior, which we hope to come in at 2.3 million. And if that comes in on the dot, then we need to decide, do we initiate these first two contracts and then wait a couple weeks to find out if Harold Martin came in at 5.2 which is the 5.2 million or not, or do we wait for it all? And that's something where your collective brains will have to decide that because do we want to wait until we get, do we want to wait till the 17th or so until we get the rough figures of the Harold Martin and then pull the trigger on it all at once. So that'll have to be a philosophical talk we have, but, but we're saying we're looking good here at the 436 is within pennies of what we schedule. That's the good news. Now, I will give one bad news is that only carried a $5,000 construction side contingency. Is that right, BPS, that I'm reading that, that right? That, that is correct. So that's sort of one of those things where we've made budget by putting in that figure. That's not really, Jay will nod his head, a realistic figure on, on a $935,000 project. We're probably going to hit more than $5,000 worth of unknowns. Now we on the owner side have kept uh, under our owner's soft costs, I've kept 275,000 for changes throughout. So that's sort of our back pocket money. So we, we have to decide how we're gonna divvy that out. But just to let you all know that this is the budget, but it's very tight. It's good. I mean, it's better than being here today of being a hundred thousand over. So I'm not negating it, but I think we just want to know it's it's right on the money. It's tight. And, and Gordon, I would say too with that, I, I understand that we're we're kind of light on that contingency, but where the the work at Maple Street School is fairly simple too. Correct. Um, that we don't have uh, large exposures in dirt work or mechanical even in there. Um, so I'm, I, you know, you know, I'd, I'd love to have more contingency, but at the same time, it's, it's not a, uh, a complex project. Right. And to help the rest of the committee, what he's saying there is what we've said all along. We make our money before we break ground. In other words, by doing all this good studying up front and good drawings, we can have a tighter budget because there's less unknowns. If you just had drawings that were 80% complete and you went out and bid this, well, you're liable to, you might've wanted to carry $60,000 in contingency. The, the two that you spoke about, that's project wide, right? That's, I mean, that's total project wide owner's contingency? Yes, the, the figure I threw out was just, was, was project wide, yes. All right, it's all three schools. Okay, thank you. And just when we developed the project, we had different contingencies that we, we included in there. Um, we had design contingencies and, and, and number, the, the terms kind of, the, sometimes they're interchangeable, sometimes they're not. But basically, it, the, the thought is, is that as we get closer to the finish line, that contingency line goes down and down and down. Now, $5,000 on a project on the side, that's pretty close to the bone. I, I feel better, too. Uh, I think the point to take away is, is that a lot of the unknowns are beginning to evaporate. Right. So uh, we can we can comfortably lower that number um, from what we originally proposed, but we can't make it go away because there will be things that come up. 
Um, but I, you know, we really need to, to echo what, what, what our experts are saying is that, you know, on this particular project, it warrants a, a, probably a harder look at a, a big contingency because we just, we probably won't need it, a huge contingency at this point because we, we're not doing the things that generally they come up into. Now, when we get to Harold Martin, that'll be another, another conversation. There's groundwork there. There's much heavier construction, but um, I'm not saying I'm comfortable with a $5,000 contingency, but it, it's, it's, not, it's not unreasonable to see that start to, to work our way down. Right, and again, for part of the committee, this is why this is a team effort. It's part of our job to tell you the good and the bad, but then we weigh it all. And, and I think that the five minute discussion we just did said, you know what, 5,000 isn't great, but it's not bad. It was a good figure. But if it ends up being 20, don't be surprised, folks. That's what we're saying. So, Gordon, just so I'm clear, am I looking at um, an estimate or am I looking at something based on bids that have come in? Uh, very good. And BPS can speak. This, this is the one where they have now chosen, mm -hmm. they feel they can put this, they could push the button and make this a contract right now. So the vendors have been chosen. These are done on bid. They have people that say they can actually do the signage for $276, for example, or the on the alternate 002 that we're looking at on the screen. They have real dollar figures in front of them. Got it. And, and can I ask one specific question, just because I'm really late to the game? Please. On page seven of that, what is the curtain wall system? I'm just curious. Sorry, I muted. Um, hold on a second. I'll show you. So yep. curtain wall is like aluminum storefront. It's just aluminum storefront that goes past the floor slab. So that's the, that's the front entrance at Maple Street? Now? No, that's this little end to the, um, to the uh, stair tower. Hold on a second. Oops. Well, he's, oh. he's talking about the Maple Street. Yeah, drum. I'm talking about the Maple Street. On the Maple Street bid in front of us, there's oh, I'm sorry. $76,000 it's called curtain wall system. That's the aluminum storefront. So maybe BPS could say, yeah. for example, what does that bid look like? So that's, those are those windows, those uh, thin oh, window systems and the insulated panels there. So that's got the operable vent and it's got the, the insulated panels where we're taking out the, the unit and putting it in. And we talked about maybe framing that up early on, but what Doug ended up with is, is a singular unit that fills that hole. It's a, it's, that's storefront system. It's not really yep. a curtain wall, but it, um, it, that's just their terminology. So to help you with what a storefront means, you know how when you go into a grocery store, it's all glass fronts or it used to be all glass fronts with big glass doors that swing. That's the type of a thing they're talking about is that it's a large glass wall system. Right. So it's, it's just, it's glass and an aluminum framing system, basically. Right. Yeah. Can, can you say again where, where that is at Maple Street? Are you talking about the entrance or are you talking about um, no, the music room? It's the music room. It's, music. Those, okay. it's, it's those seven or eight windows that wrap the three sides of the music room. Okay. And adjacent to that rear uh, exit out to the playground. Thank you. Your, your doors on the building right now are all storefront as well. So. So Rob, to help you with that going forward, let's say for example, we had come in 50,000 over. We might've revisited something like that and said, that's a nice architectural design, but is there a, we would have said to the builder, is there a way to do that cheaper? Or they would have come to us, for example, which they said early on they did. There's another way to do this and save 10 grand. We've already done that, We, but, but those are the kind of choices we can make as we go along if we start bumping up against the budget. You take away some of your some of that sort of thing right i mean i know that room pretty well my wife taught me there for a long time that seems like um a pretty high dollar cost for that particular space um in the windows that are i, I know the windows there need to go but um uh, yeah if i was looking for a spot to maybe save some money that might be it yeah we we can I would agree. There's a there's an opportunity to come up with a different plan there. Does that cost include all of the windows? So there's a there's that that space. There's the offices that are in that space, and then the yeah. 
in the that hallway and then it's that room it's eight. all the way around all of them. You're right okay because there is all, there are a lot. a lot yeah I'm, I'm not really clear of where we are at. i can i can show you in a yeah, second hold great. on so it's the learning center rob and then that space where ot is Those next two little to rooms. it yeah, yeah all where it, that's all messed up right there but right um, and then outside where the kids come in from recess so it's not just that corner room no it's it's all i think he did it all i think that is all of all of those old the oldest that whole wing. one two three four five six seven eight nine nine windows it doesn't seem well, there should be another um, side. So you've got the side where kids come in from recess, and then you've got the side. Right. Um, there should be the one that faces the. Um, there's, there's four on this side, and yeah. there's five on this side. Got it. And how much? How much is that? I'm looking. I'm trying to toggle between two screens. We'll let BPS tell us, but I think it's 76,000 BPS. 76,9 is what's on the sheet. Right. So that's the kind of thing that if we feel strongly, that's what this committee's about. We, we, we number one, we know we, we would proceed the way we're going, but if you say we'd like you to get back to us with an alternate to that, that is where we then can turn Doug different loose. He spends a, a few hours drawing them differently and BPS bids them differently and then they send it out for a price. And, and that's not unusual to do on one or two or three things on a project like this. How does it change the scope of the project for timeline and stuff when we go back out in order to stay on track? It, it would just be absorbed within the schedule because it's not a critical item. Who's your um, successful bidder on that? Granite State. Great, okay. They've done a lot of work in the building. They did all the doors. They did the front. So, I mean, they know our building. I just wonder why it's so much. Did you go to Roger? Did you get bids from Roger? Wait, waiting on Roger still. Really? Okay. Barry talked to Roger this week, and um, of course, they're a smaller outfit. And as you know, sometimes they have hot numbers, and they just haven't been able to fit the project in. So, okay. hopefully... We've given them the time they through. need to give us a number. Right, right, sorry, for everybody else, Roger is Pentucket Glass, who was uh, uh -huh. our our successful bidder on Auburn, who came in substantially lower than Granite State. I'd like to ask Steve's opinion on the on go. What's that? Norm, you cut out the last part of your sentence. Norm. There you go. I, I lost a blimp here. Steve, I didn't hear you. What'd you say? Please Did you have a question for me? No, your thought process on looking at that at Maple. I just wanted to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, I, I think, you know, taking a look at Pentucket maybe, but uh, Granite State's done good work for us. Uh, we like working with them. Um, and it's an old wing of old windows. I don't know. If I, I don't have a lot of context on how much that is. It might, it might make more sense to to look at this a little bit more holistically, instead of going line by line and picking things out. Um, there's a, there's a couple of downsides to that. One is if we look at the if we look at the way that the the project's moving forward with the work that's been done and the, the bids that have been, been picked up. And I, I don't know exactly where uh, BPS is with their different, their different subs on that, but it's, it's possible that um, we, by the time we go through this exercise, we could find out that we get turned around with the, with the bid prices too. It may not save that much. So it might be better to look at all at, uh, look at it all at once as we get a little bit closer to the end. Uh, and then that'll also give us the idea, give us an idea of the gravity of the, 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 the cuts that we may need to make versus just, picking a number out of a sheet and deciding that's what we want to talk about tonight. Uh, that's a good point. You know, I've done that with quotes that we wait for everything to come in and then you kind of look at the whole scope of the whole thing and then 
something will stick out or if you have to, you're looking for something else, um, that'd be the way to go. Rob, would you be okay with that? Do we kind of? I mean, it wasn't really just picking a number because of that. It's, uh, and I don't know the cost of industrial windows, but eight and a half thousand dollars a window is a lot of dough for, you know, yeah. it just seems like when we're, we're, we have a lot of all plans that I, I, I'd be curious to know what the alternatives are. You know, that well, we're going to high for nine windows. We're going to go through the whole bids. I mean, we, we got this to, this one today. So we'll go through it with BPS and we'll also go through it on the executive committee side and make recommendations. Um, yes, they are hot. They, they are high. They're higher than what I anticipated, but these, these aren't just windows. They go from the floor sill all the way to the roof edge. So it's that whole slot. So it's a whole, whole assembly. So. That's a good point. Just asking questions. No, that's good. Good. It's good to ask questions. And Rob, answer. with a comfort level, though, on behalf of his question, we have time to revisit this, Rob. So, so we've given you the draft. I think everybody's heard you clearly that look at, look at that as a spot. But yeah, goal. We definitely want to be able to look at them line by line. I just, I think what we, we, we probably need to look at the kind of more the whole project versus the individual lines. And I haven't seen the, I'm just looking at this at the first time like everybody else. Uh, th there are gonna be numbers that are gonna jump out at us that we're gonna need to pay more attention to. And I'm, I'm, I wouldn't wanna say that that's a, that, that, that's, that number is either in or out of line until we look at it in a little more detail. But um, I, I just, we, we, can, we can lose some, some inertia if we if we go down too far down the rabbit hole on some of these things and and I I, I didn't mean it that we don't want to answer any questions or looking at any of the details because it's a good point you know if we th we're thinking that's a place where we can economize and we can save you know five figures of expense there we we might want to put it somewhere else into one of the restrooms or or just uh, keep it as a surplus in the project that we can talk about when we're done. Keith, I got a question. Is are contractors looking at these as standalone projects right now? Doug, I'm sorry, we're kind of in and out. The question is, are contractors looking at, at as at, individual? Yes. They're um, looking at these as standalone projects, right? Yeah, so, so it's kind of a two piece thing here where, and, and we're looking at them as standalone projects right now, but what I'm looking forward to is as we, as we assemble these numbers on middle high, we're going to see some right. some commonality between subcontractors, and maybe we can start packaging up the work and make it uh, make it work out for you numbers wise a little better. Right. So, for, for instance, roofing. You know, that's that's one of the larger parts of the project. We potentially have different subcontractors on the schools there's an opportunity there to go back to folks and say hey if i you're you're close but you're not there give me your best price to package up the roof right and we maybe didn't articulate that to the committee well before but that's the intention is to each one of these we're, we've got the prices and then at the very end it will be a, if there's commonality and i think the roof's a very good example you go back to the three the, the three bids let's say each each school is a different roofer and now you say to all three roofers, what's the price if you get the package deal? And we all know it goes down. And, and then also there's a benefit, I think, both to the ease and constructability of running the project and to you guys in the future of, of having right. common subcontractors on those projects. Okay. That, that goes for warranties too, right? Warranties. Yeah, warranties and all that. At the same time, sometimes the savings is just too much, and and there'll be one or two in there that was like, we'll say, guys, look, it's we should we should split this individual package up in the interest of saving a few bucks. Just the way it the way it falls sometimes. All right. Does anyone else have any questions? I'm sure we'll be digging quite a bit into this as we go through the 
next couple of weeks and months and that uh, I look forward to seeing the other bids coming in. I really do, especially with the um, high school. I would think that we would think next week, the junior senior BPS, what's your target there? You'll get, you've got the prices in now, you're massaging yeah. them in the next couple of days. That and then we probably can publish something like we did this afternoon to you all in what, about a week? Yeah, yeah, hopefully before that. So look in your inbox to this committee and you should be hoping to see junior senior high school coming at you in the next seven days. And then we'll again have a good drift of if, if, if the market and the economy is still trending well. Let's hope it comes in under the 2.39 million. Awesome. Well, thank you guys very much for uh, the update on that and answering uh, our questions. Um, if everyone's okay, I'm going to move on to our financial report. I'll turn over to Michelle. Sure, you should have seen in the Google Drive the May financial, um, which shows that we've spent so far just under $435,000. Perfect. I did see that, Michelle. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Does anyone have any questions for Michelle? Awesome. Probably one of our biggest topics for tonight is um, this board, this committee has been charged to make a recommendation to the school board on the term of the bond. And it's definitely um, an important recommendation we need to make to them. And we have to make this recommendation tonight because the board needs to vote on it on Thursday. Um, a lot of you have seen the bond runs in our folders and have had a chance to review them and had a chance to see what the impact's going to be in year one, year two, and year three, and looking at the difference in years. Um, I think it's important to have one person maybe do a little bit of a presentation or explain a little bit of how other districts have done it, um, what we've come up with for possible, possible um, bond runs and open up the floor for a discussion on it. So I'm not sure who would like to do a little bit of a presentation on what we have. Can I just uh, speak to the history a little bit? Of course, please do. Start there and then just turn it over to whoever in there. So um, <clears throat> I'm just getting ready for this discussion. I look back at the um, documents and presentations used in January of night. Um, when we were making presentations to the community. So back then, when the board decided, you know, we just a real quick that, um, you know, we, there was a, a move for a very large project, which, which wasn't feasible. We went to the school district meeting and Jay gave an update at the school district meeting. Then right after that school district meeting, we did a survey and the survey, um, we had five, 600 people, I think on the survey. And that's where we came up with the under 10 million. We spent the next year, Jay, Dave, remember Dave, we, 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 we consolidated the project under 10 million, brought that through and got support. So when that came through, we were looking at a, a project of 9.7 million and the tax impact was about 98 cents. And back then during those presentations, the community, one of the priorities was a level tax rate as opposed to, uh, you know, we, it was, I think it was, the work of the board with, we did the tax rate stabilization fund and we were looking at a 20 year for a um, level debt, which kept it um, even, pretty even throughout the time. And that was the number that we were using. This year, Michelle and I spent a lot of time, the rates came down quite a bit. The rates of, you know, between 15 and 20 came, came closer and we looked at the interest savings and also we looked at level principal versus level debt and got sort of enticed by the the savings and in, in interest over those times um, but at, at the beginning when we were pre presenting this project to the community it was 20 years and it was level debt and it was about a dollar based on where we were 9.7 million based on with interest rates back then and one of the things that we the, the a couple of things to consider if you go level principal, that saves you an interest, but you pay much more at the beginning than you do, it, it, it decreases at the end. So if you live in the town for the first five years, you pay more interest than you do at the last five years, as opposed to a level 
debt, which is pretty consistent throughout. And a, a bond, I remember going back to Dr. Ayers, he came in and said, there really is an optimum amount of bonding that you want in your, in your community because that is one of the few ways in New Hampshire to spread out your tax base. It's not just the people who live in, in town right now, it's the people who live in the town over 15 or 20 years. So I, Michelle and I went back and, and we talked to Tammy and we, and just for the board, for this group's edification, we took a look at level debt versus level principal versus 20 years versus 15 years. And, and just to make sure you had all the choices. And I think there is some argument that the equitability of a 20 years, people who live in 20 years pay a piece. Most schools, and I have talked to Gordon today, most schools do do a 20 year. Our predecessors in, in um, 97, they did a 20 year. Um, Bow High School did a 20 year, Hollis Brookline did 20. So 20 years, it, it seems to be more prevalent. Level debt, for, and, and there's no doubt there's been a lot of pressure on the budget. There will be pressure on the budget of the next few years. So uh, the 20 year, notion and maybe even a level debt may actually be more equitable for people and it may spread it out but there is obviously an interest cost so in, in the folder with a aqua blue if everybody saw it is just a spreadsheet that talks about a 20-year bond and thanks to michelle and norm a 20-year bond first payment second payment just to see the escal the de-escalation of it and then total interest uh, just to give you a, a chance to look at it and for example if we did a 20-year level debt five million that's a 39 cent pretty consistent tax rate 4.7 million level debt 20 years is a 41 cent pretty pretty consistent tax rate and these are all estimates until we actually sell but that's an 80 cent impact on your tax rate and remember, it was 98 cents when I presented, or Jay presented, or we present, whoever presented in March. So that's, it. and obviously this is phased in because we've talked about that. But there's a 20 cent drop than what was sold to the community on a 9.7 piece level debt compared to now. And that's all I just offered out there. Um, I, for a long time, I was looking at this as my own personal finance right? You, in my house, you do a 15-year bond, you save the interest yourself. But in a municipal finance, it's a benefit of the entire community. If you do a 15-year and someone moves in at year 16, they make a benefit, but they don't share in the expense. And if you do a level uh, principal, you live in the town the first five years, it's higher than if you did the last five years. And I leave it up to this board and the next board's wisdom on how to do it. Um, but I just wanted to throw those options into it and in full transparency, the original presentation to the community was 20 year level debt, about a dollar. And we are now 20, if you go 20 years level debt, we're under potentially under 80 cents. I'm just throwing it out there. Is that Norm? Is that okay if I did I just talk about that? Yeah, you can know that it's a, it's a great thing. I mean, I'll, I'll say a, a couple of things and I, definitely hear from Rob, you know, and others, you know, the first thing, you know, I think, I think of is like, of course, I, I want to save interest, you know, and, you know, if I could refinance my, buy a house right now, 15 years and afford it, I would absolutely do it, but I certainly can't. Um, and it's only one, it's only my own income. Well, we have multiple people in Hopkinton that um, might struggle um, with a 15 year tax increase, you know, on, on, on the, um, on the tax impact. Um, it, 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 I really struggled with this, but I think the most important thing for me, um, when, you know, having a discussion about this with you guys was how can we continue with what, whatever option we take and maintain, in, you know, helping out our schools. still. we have a bunch of things that's going to be happening. And of course, the next couple of years, potentially a teacher's contract. We're still going to have um, a potential budget increase um, that that tax impacts going to increase. And I don't want the schools per se to be handcuffed that we're not able to um, find common ground. I, I'm a big fan of saving interests, but um, you know, I do like, I do like the thought process just to get this conversation going that everybody 
is paying the same level of debt no matter when you move into Hopkinton, um, that one person is not doing it and then the other person isn't. Um, the other thing, just from talking out loud with you guys, is that we, we are continuing the project as promised to the taxpayers, and we are even going lower than that was promised to the taxpayers, um, which is extremely important to me. Um, however, the times have changed from when we had that forum, and I think that's important to acknowledge. But just to get the discussion going, I think it's important that we um, look at is this rate being sustainable for everybody and finding common ground that we're still able to provide to our schools, to our students, and be reasonable for all the taxpayers. Rob, you have your mic off. No. I can't hear you. Rob. There we go. Sorry, okay. the dog's been barking on and on. <laughs> um, Steve, I just a quick question. Level debt versus level principal, is there a big difference in the um, interest for those two, or is it just how they're spread out? No, there's, 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 a, there's a difference in the interest, and I lost my uh, spreadsheet, but I'll find it somewhere. It, uh, I don't know where it went to. Um, but on, in the aqua thing, so the interest on a, uh, and so the rate, we don't, the rate's a big driver, right? The biggest driver in interest is going to be the rate. But um, let's see, a level debt 5 million uh, interest, and Michelle can probably help me because she's there too. Is one point, well, the level debt is 1.264763 versus the 20 year. Um, the other option, which we've been running, is one million one ninety two five hundred. So the that's 20. you know that's about just that's what uh, seventy two thousand, Michelle. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's good. that's the same interest rate. So it's a little bit more. So that's actually not too bad. That's a seventy two thousand dollar increase by going level debt, but it evens it out over the time, and that is the same interest rate. Thanks, Michelle. Appreciate you picking me up there. Yeah, no problem. No, um, and the other option that's down there is, um, and again, Tammy was doing these kind of at the last minute. So um, some of the difference, if you look at the spreadsheet that Steve's referring to, is because when she gave one option, she gave 2.75. When she gave another option, she gave 2.5. Obviously, they would be the same. It's not going to be a different interest rate on what option we take. So that kind of, I just want to be transparent, it kind of skews things a little that it looks like it's more than potentially it could be. Yeah, because it's not apples to apples. So it really isn't, and, and, and Rob, I'm just interested in your thoughts on, is it more equitable to even out the payment or to decrease the, it's a 12 cent, on one of that I just looked, it's a you know 12 cent decrease over some of it, you know? If we, we did level debt, yep. I don't have the spreadsheet in front of me because I, I can't get them both up on my screen here. If you did level principal, the tax rate um, drops about, I, I looked at one of the part, you know, one of the phased in, it starts at 58 and ends at 41. So that's a 17 cent drop over the life versus staying right. pretty tight. Instead With, of 39 and 41. Exactly. And, yeah. and that's, and I just really wanted this to be part of the discussion, Rob, as we take a look at all these options. I mean, I, I echo, you know, Norm's thought here on making this affordable for the taxpayers over time. You know, the thought of a 15 year is, is not even on the table for me. Um, I just, I think that we need to think about affordability and affordability and the real, how we're going to manage that debt here. You know, I think we've got to go 20 years, whether or not we go level debt or level principal. Um, you know, I'm, I'm open to hear what other folks have to say, but I just think in our current situation, we, we really can't afford to go 15. I appreciate that, Rob. Thank you. Can this committee make a recommendation to the school board on the bond and have the board talk about level debt? And determine. Sure, um, Michelle. Do you know when the determination between level debt or level principal is made? 
I believe it would have to, we'll have to check, but I don't think in the resolution that you got Me either that yeah. it says that, but it would have to be before all the information is wrapped up, which I believe is around the 20th of June. So, so what's happening Thursday is there, there's uh, on the agenda, and I met with Andrea and Jim today. So Norm, under the building committee, you'll be, you'll provide an update. And there's, there's a, a recommendation from the committee. And then there's two, four, there's two action items the board has to take. One is they have to vote in favor of the certificate of vote of finance. Okay. And that's in the packet. The other one is they have to authorize Jim to sign the bond application as the chair to um, buy $5 million to, okay. to, to, to get a bond of $5 million. And I, as Michelle said, I didn't see in either of those documents, I did see Term, right, Michelle? Term and amount is there. Yes. But not the type. And we can talk with Tammy tomorrow about, you know, that decision. And we can actually get a recommendation too. But in the old days when this was presented, it was stability was the uh, base. It wasn't the de-escalation. And now that I look at this, um, the level debt is about a $2,500 less amount for next year's budget. So it would probably, yes, but we'll confirm with um, Ronell and Tammy, but my, now that I'm looking at that specific amount, it looks like it's possible that it would have to be for the resolution. Okay. You know, for that, for the, uh, one of the items that has to be done. So I'm with Rob. I mean, I know we're only two here and you know, I, I, I really, I mean, like I said, I'm a big fan on saving interest. I, I, I love that, but you know, I got to pretend as if I'm everybody in Hopkinton and I, and we have people who are struggling alone um, to pay their taxes. And I just, I think I like the philosophy or the mindset that, you know, if we're able to spread it out, it gives us a lot of room to do more with the budget instead of being handcuffed. And if we have this option and we're fulfilling the promise to the taxpayers at a lower rate than what we did, um, I can say in good faith we're doing the right thing. Um, does anyone else have any comments on this? We'd love to hear from other people. I just have a question for me, for Michelle, and that is your resolution Thursday night's going to pass. Uh, you're going to say a certain something, but you're not going to actually sign the bond until, are we talking August? Well, no. Oh, well, there's some stuff that has to, we're getting our proceeds in August. Because where I was going with my comment to give the, the, the school board a safety valve is if you vote one thing on Thursday night, and if life changes and things look tremendously better in the next month and a half, is there anything that precludes the board from saying, you know, let's say they go for a 20 year fixed and they decide, you know what? Things are looking better. Everything's wonderful. Let's go 15. I don't think they can change their mind. My right. my conversations with Ronell has been that, and, and Tammy has been that, you know, everything needs to be wrapped up as a bow. Um, right. Because mem it was the mock that they did. So this is really going to be the, the actual um, bond no, run. No problem. That was just more of a devil's advocate question. So, okay, yeah, you do. Yeah. We have due dates by our bond council for board action, um, definitive due dates. It's not Thursday, but it's, you know, we'd like to get it done Thursday, make sure we can wrap everything up and get it to gotcha. Okay. So I'd like to, um, I'd like to hear from Jay on this. Um, since you know, he started this whole process years ago, Jay, what is, and, and you know, as a taxpayer, you know, in Hopkinton, like, like myself and, and Rob and others, where are you feeling with this? recommendation to the board uh well i've got two thoughts norm uh, one, one is is that i think the from a building point of view i think the important thing that we want to make sure is that the for the renovations that we're proposing are outlive the bond and i think that i think we can say that with you know a high degree of certainty there's nothing in in this project that will will, will expend before the end of the 20-year bond so uh, I'm comfortable from a building point of view saying either the 15 or the 20 year is a, is a, is a fair choice to the, the people that are borrowing the money. We won't need to go after money again for something that we're paying for now. 
So um, it gets into, um, you know, now we get into kind of the details of the philosophy. I understand the, and as, again, as a homeowner, I see the 15 versus 20 as a, um, a savings and interest that would be nice. But I agree that, you know, we are going to be looking at a, at a, at a higher payment uh, over a shorter, even though it is a shorter period of time, um, knowing the stress that everybody's under to try to make the, just the next payment, regardless of whether it's uh, the first of, uh, of um, 15 or the first of 20, it's still going to be a number that's going to be hard to swallow. Um, I think I'm, I'm along with, with both you and Rob that the, the 20 year is probably the way to go. Um, <laughs> once we get beyond that, we're kind of outside my level of expertise. Uh, that gets more into financing the, the yeah. level, the two different levels. But uh, I think, you know, e either the 15 or the 20 years from a building perspective, I think is good. But as a taxpayer, the, the 20, I think, would be more appealing. Um, and, it, and it does touch on Steve's point that having heard the concerns as we brought this forward is, is that, um, you know, people get to take advantage of the, the schools and then they go. But we really are, you know, people are going to be paying for this, this work for the duration of their, their children's uh, um, time in school if, if there's somebody that's taken that has a kid in the district. So... I think it answers that question as neatly as we can, and, and we can show now that we did we did have a, a savings here because of the bond rate. So uh, I think we originally pitched this as a way to try to get a 15-year note at the price of a 20, but uh, with everything going on, I, I agree. I think a, the, we should probably take the 15-year off the table. Okay, thank you very much. Does anyone else have any more comments um, about this? I really appreciate everyone's, um, you know, comments and, and suggestions. And I'm not hearing any debate on what we should do. So if someone would like to throw a motion out for us to make a recommendation to the school board for 20 year, I'd love to hear it. I'll move that uh, our recommendation to the board should be for a 20 year bond and that we can discuss on Thursday, whether that be level debt or level principal. I'll second. Perfect. All right, I'm gonna do a quick roll call. Uh, Jay Burgess. Yes. Rob Nato. Yes. Steve Chamberlain. Yes. Michelle Clark. Yes. Bill Carosa? Yes. Amy Doyle? Yes. Chris and Rebecca? I'll say yes. I don't know if he's there, so. He might be doing a thumbs up. Okay. And Norm Goopel is a yes. Great. So motion carries. Thank you guys very much for that great um, discussion. Um, Michelle, I definitely want to have the board um, in the community to be able to see the spreadsheet that's been compiled so they can see it when we're discussing it on Thursday so they can see what we looked at regarding the impact and the interest if that's okay. Oh, absolutely. Yep. Perfect. Awesome. All right. Um, so the next thing we'll do quickly is public comment. Um, we have a couple people here. Is there anyone here that has any comments that they'd like to ask, please raise your hand. Okay, okay. Yes, um, Judy has a, Judy has a uh, question. Could you please unmute her, Steve? Yeah. Okay. Oh, good evening. Hi, hi, Judy. Hi, uh, thanks for ho hosting this and letting us uh, listen in. Um, because the bids were kind of jumping around, I am i think I lost a few numbers. So is it true that Harold Martin is approximately bid right now at 936 million? No, the uh, uh, Maple Street's uh, under about 930,000. Harold Martin hasn't come in yet. Harold Martin ah. it will be in um, soon. Um, but yes, it's under, a, Maple's under a million. Okay, so that's where you're looking to, to offset some, the fact that you're so skinny on contingencies. Right. Okay. 
So if, if anything comes up from the community or, oh, for example, there's something at the high school or one of the, one of the buildings that wasn't in this plan to be taken care of, do you feel that you have the capabilities to shift some funds to take care of some contingency that either is in the works now or up the walls and there's a bigger problem than you thought? Are you talking about the bond, the bond project, Judy, or are you talking about just yes. in a... Yeah. Okay, so we, we have not received the contingency numbers for the high school, it's my understanding. We've already received information tonight on Maple Street. Gotcha, okay. Um, all right, uh, let's see. So when you... Um, have taken this recommendation of moving us from uh, the 10 year bond to the 20 year bond. It's still the same number, it's just spread no, 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 no. years. There was no recommendation from 10 to 15. You say 20 or 15? 20. Okay, continue. Yeah, yeah, I, I thought that's what I heard. Is that correct? You're going to try to move it from 10 to 20 years? 15 to 20. From 15 to 20, okay. <laughs> But I'm just trying to make sure that I heard everything correctly. And, um, okay, so I think that's all that I have for now. Thank you so much. Thank you, Judy. Yeah. All right. Um, and next up would be Amanda Gilman. And Gordon, you had some information to look into that we would forwarded to you regarding some questions around the great grants. Did you have time to look at that? We did not look at the at the grants and that was something it's, we just haven't yet. Steve and I and Michelle have a call later this week to talk about something else and I think they had said they had been looking for any state, this is a question about state money. Yeah. We haven't formulated our answer on that but, but basically there doesn't look like there's any or we would already be knowing about it. Is that fair? Yeah. But we want, well, to, we want to vet that properly before we respond to your constituents. Perfect. All right. Reaction hey, Amanda. We've been looking at it, and we don't see anything. But we want to just put the bow tie on that. Perfect. Thank you, sir. Anytime Hi, we Amanda. We want to thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you all for your time. Um, and I appreciate a response on that. And you, I, in my email, I was pretty clear. I think that uh, July 1st is the deadline uh, for a proposal. So th that is a, a time crunch um, to look at something for the future. Is that something that you were aware of, Gordon? Yes, and, and Amanda, again, not to answer you on the fly, but I'll give you a little bit. What, what you'll find often too on state funding is you get in the queue it's just that the queue is a couple years long, and that's too late for us. I mean, I, I don't want to, I want to get the proper answer to you, but at this point, if we already haven't been approved and on a list somewhere through the legislature, it is, I just don't want to mislead you. It's not likely that we're going to find anything. However, we will get ourselves on the list if that's the right thing to do. It's just that typically that list gets filled long after we're done. Sadly. Meaning that the money's already probably gone or going to right. be gone. Is that what you mean? Yeah. So yes. we probably Whatever. should have looked into this sooner. No, we no. Did. But again, Steve, you talk, they did look into it sooner. There wasn't any. Go ahead. We made all, uh, all possible applications for state building aid during this process. And at one point was notified by the DOE that we weren't eligible um, during one of the cycles. Uh, I think Michelle has that communication. From the deal. I think that was back in 2018. I, I spoke to the lady at the state uh, who runs it and she remembered our application from 2018, which had been withdrawn. Uh, and she pulled it up, actually looked at it and said that she hadn't heard from us since 2018. Uh, and that while we did miss the January 1st deadline, she would be willing to grant us a waiver if we wrote requesting a waiver uh, and that the January 1st deadline is really just for their planning purposes so that they try to have an idea of how much money they need to allot for the next two-year cycle I mean, and it's a yeah just, uh, we'll make sure we contact the same person who did you speak with 
Um, it's in the email that I sent you her yeah. phone number Gordon, and contact yeah. information. Gordon, Gordon will uh, respond to you, Amanda. I, I, um, I know they've been a little bit busy, but I have, um, okay. I'll be real. Last point, make. last point on that really quick is she did say that nothing we spend in 2020 would be eligible, but if we get our thing in by 2021 and there were funds available, uh, I mean, by July 1st and the funds available money we spent in January of 2021 could be eligible for 70, 30 matching. So she made it sound like there was some small glimmer of hope of finding something, but I realize it's a, an arduous process. So I appreciate your time in looking into Thank that, Gordon. You. And and what we'll do again, Steve and Michelle and I have a, have a call on another subject in a, you know, tomorrow or the next day. I forget on the calendar. We'll we'll talk about that then again. Thank you. And if, if it ends up being nothing, then I'm sorry I wasted your time. But I'm very nothing. grateful for you taking the time to to look it out. Um, Michelle, briefly, what was the, I missed the interest rate difference on the two 20 year bonds. The two 20 year bonds have the same interest rate. Oh, they two, do. You said 0.13. Yeah. Oh, the, okay. the one that Perfect. doesn't is the 4.7 because it's so far out. She gave us one with three and I think one with two points or maybe it was a 15 year. Sorry. I kind of put that away. It's okay. Um, uh, it's you have right that available here. for Thursday. With the board, yes, yep, we'll definitely have it. The 20 year was given the same rate by her. It was the 15 that was um, given a 2.75 versus a 2.5. Um, oh. So that's what I was, so, um, and again, that's just for a, the um, next year of having that. That's why she has to give it so high because of, of being a conservative rate. For the next year, meaning if you took some of the bond next year? Right, because the plan is the bond is only going to be taken for $5 million right now. And then we're going to do the okay. balance looking at our cash flow, whether it be um, ideally we'd like to do it next August because then that way we can spread out more of the um, payment so it's not as drastic of a, another increase for next year's, you know, not next year, but the year after's budget. Yeah. Um, but um, that's also looking at things and how it's coming in. Um, but it was determined that it's possible that we could hold off and potentially get a ban. Um, then that way we could spread it to a different fiscal year for the start of the first payment and principal and interest. So I had, was it this board's decision to divide it into two or because that was already decided before now, you're still going with that into two bonds, one this year and one next year, even though the interest rates are different? That was what's in the budget proposal that we, um, cause we cut doing one bond. Right. Okay. And that'll yeah. probably, okay. That's more of a school board question. All right. Well, I appreciate your time, everyone and your effort. Thank you. And, um, last thing to Rob real quick, Rob Nato, thank you for digging into like the minutia, um, you know, and, and asking questions like that. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Can I give you this, can I give yeah. you some background on the department of education's, um, building aid Please. submission? Please. So I'm doing the same process right now for another school district. Um, there is a summary sheet of all the projects that have been submitted over the last year um, on, on the DOE website. Yes. That, that sheet totals $650 million worth of projects. I think, it's, I think it's across 23 school districts or something like that. Out of that $650 million, the state, um, based on the percentages that they outlined to reimburse each community, um, would be responsible for about $230 million of that. The state only funds $50 million a year for school building aid. And um, they're taking a portion of that each year and paying off the, the debt that was run up um, in the 2000s and paying off those school projects before they froze building aid. And then they, then they have approximately, um, I think she said 17 to $18 million, maybe 30 to share between projects during the, during the school year. Yes, there is the possibility of getting some funding, but um, what typically happens is there's a ranking system between the school districts based upon need and, and what's being done in the projects. And typically they're only selecting the top um, three or four projects to receive building aid that year out of, out of you know, 
20 to 30 projects. So yes, we can go through the project. Me, I, I'd love to have some funding from the state, but um, I, I wouldn't keep your fingers crossed. I don't, and I think that state funding is actually going to dry up worse than that because business profits tax is down. So I'm, I'm a realist. I yeah, realize that this is probably next, futile. Next year, they might cancel school building aid. I, right. ha I have no idea. But, but, I, but I, on that list, if you look at it, there's building projects out through 2040, and some schools have their, building, their roofs on there out through 2040. And mm -hmm. they just keep reapplying and reapplying. And here we are doing roofs that are long overdue. So to me, that's great need. Uh, and we haven't received state funding. So I guess we don't really know how they're going to rank our need until we look into it. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And I realize there's probably no money, but I appreciate you looking into it. Um, okay. Thank you for asking, Amanda. Me. All right. Thanks, guys. And Amanda, Thank there's a folder on support docs with some on runs on the building project that you've got. Awesome. I will look that up. Thank you. You're welcome. Very good. Um, if there's any more comments, um, I have just one from Catherine Mateo that she wrote in that I think it can answer, and um, I think that'll be it. She wrote, Dear members of the building committee, I cannot attend the meeting tonight, but I wanted to leave a public comment, so I'm emailing it instead. I just wanted to ask the building committee to consider moving the needed elevator repair estimate about around 92400 I believe, into the project's scope of work in funding. It's a facility repair, and it makes sense to me for such a large expense to be included in the bond's future repairs. Perhaps with some more bids, some more bids, a better estimate may come in um, that's, that is cheaper. But most importantly, I'd like, I would really like help from the school board's budget, considering they ha may have some cash flow constraints looming another budget. Um, so uh, I got the scope of your question, Catherine. Um, I understand that, that those. 92,000 can help with um, two or three people's salaries, like you say in your email uh, for part time. But it's my understanding that the elevator would not be part of this project because it's outside the scope. I think they and added, Doug, did you add it to an alt? No, we said we were going to pull it out and do it, pull it out of out of the scopes that you had a bid already and put it into the soft costs. Right, so so that would still be within, it, so it's within the project if we wanted to. I mean, it, it's segmented somewhere in the project. Correct. Yeah. So we just have to figure out if that's the priority when we when we start taking a look at all the adults and stuff. So it's, so it's outside the main scope. But it's, it's, right. it's outside the construction scope. Construction scope. In the okay. project scope. Yeah. It's in the umbrella. So if we had, so if we had that. Is is we he said it's been moved over to the soft costs. So for example, where I said earlier we carried two hundred and seventy five thousand in soft costs. Let's say that we get to a point where you say, okay, this is a priority. Take ninety thousand of that out of the two seventy five. You could say that to us. That would be right where that would come from. Right. We just have to look at the whole at all. We have to look at the whole thing. Yes. Yep. Thank you. Perfect. So I think that answered, that answered her question. Um, my son, my son's calling me. Sorry, um, <laughs> he's like, Dad, it's past six. Anyways, um, I just want to say thank you to um, to everyone for coming tonight, and I will take a motion to adjourn until our next okay, meeting. You put Amanda, do you want to make the motion? <laughs> Does anyone want to make a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Okay. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Have a great night, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Norm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Thank you.